What do we have to do to make people thrive in space? Not just survive, but thrive. Let's go, let's go to space. We know long duration zero gravity is bad for you. It's not an ethical stance for us to continue finding out just how bad is bad without making some effort to make bad into good. As an engineer, you know, I look at this giant collection of problems, most of which are unsolved. And I just go, God, wouldn't it be easier to just put some spin on? The idea of having a gravity vector gives a great assurance to your customers that what they design and test on the ground and then ship up there for the unique environments and stuff will, will work. The people working them will not have to worry as much about the physiological problems associated with a full-time microgravity environment. We have to build infrastructure. You need the places we can build factories. You need the places where we can do research and development. You gotta have places for people to stay. You gotta have places for people to work. You gotta have places for people to live. It's just the next logical step. No, no, absolutely. I think the partial gravity to have a, an actor say, "Here's your, here's your quarters on a spaceship that that has, you know, centrifugal force." They, they could go look out the window, and it's really what's out the window. It's really yeah. turning around. And it's, again, it's not a visual effect. You know, in the many years I was at Ames, we were always kind of disappointed that there was no artificial gravity that you could do large kind of testing and samples. That's a really exciting opportunity now to have an even bigger more robust, more realistic kind of a thing with your station. I think it's very exciting. And I think with you guys, not only is it a beautiful environment to begin with, but then also being able to say, all right, we, we want to intentionally be able to work within this to be able to bring retrofitable components, but well, we're actually going to go up and we're really going to see this, we're really going to experience it. I think, I, I think it'd be a whole new era of filmmaking and production. You could have scientists in, a, in an environment that would sustain them and you don't have to worry about the microgravity effects, but also have access to a microgravity environment in the same you know, type of uh, vehicle. You know, that's, that would be really awesome. Also manufacturing, uh, you know, 3D printers like to have a little bit of gravity. You know, we want to use your facilities and my hope is that there are other commercial companies doing manufacturing on your, on your platform. Um, that we can feed materials that we're manufacturing directly into. So, you know, in that sense, you have kind of an industrial park. I see what you're doing in the short term, the practical manifestation of large-scale space migration, but that you see the bigger picture. We need that in order to do it right. Yes. Be able to bring up modules that are tailored to specific market opportunities quickly um, will be another huge advantage. Or Orbital Assembly is trying to get to that MVP more quickly than anyone else. Uh, that's what excites me about Orbital Assembly is that the opportunity to be first to that market without um, the challenge of NASA. You guys were not afraid to go against the traditional way of doing things. There's so many possibilities. Um, whenever you have this type of asset in the location you guys are looking to put it in.